Hello! Here I have a very interesting set of construction objects. They're known as Polydron Sphere. And with them, you can create spheres, cylinders, and cones. And parts of spheres, cylinders, and cones. You can order them in different sizes. The smallest is the starter set. This particular one is the classroom set. And I'll be talking about both types in this video. These are the six types of pieces included with Polydron Sphere. Sphere, Cylinder, Circle or Quadrant, Cone, Square, Right Triangle. These are the solids you can create at the same time using the Polydron Sphere starter set. Sphere, Cylinder, Cone, half cone, half cylinder, hemisphere. The starter set should be fine if you're a private tutor or parent of a homeschool child. However, if you're a teacher in a classroom, I highly recommend you get the class set. Connecting sphere pieces can be a bit more challenging compared to those of other polydron sets, like the regular polydron pieces or frameworks but with a little patience and practice, you should not have a problem. If I want to connect two pieces, I recommend using a helper piece. Place the pieces you want to connect next to each other on top of the helper piece, line them up, and then just snap into place. And then just continue. The last piece that you should put into place on a sphere is the one with the triangular hole. That way you can very easily snap the hinges together. Also you can use this as a way of placing the sphere on a table without having it roll around. You can also use the helper piece to put the cylindrical pieces together like this. And finally, you can use a helper piece to connect cone pieces. Here's a sample color variation for the sphere. This one looks a lot like a beach ball. With the class set, you could also make spheres that are all of one color, or maybe just half the sphere and use another set of colors for the other half. One way of measuring the diameter of a sphere is to just insert a pipe cleaner from one end to the other, and then carefully measure its length. Of course, the diameter and the radius is very easily found with the hemisphere. I created these solids using pieces of the hemisphere. These represent an eighth of a sphere or a quarter of a hemisphere. You can use all of one color, like this, or multicolors. This represents half hemisphere or a quarter of a sphere. This is three quarters hemisphere or three eighths of a sphere. With the cylinder, or half cylinder, you can find volume, total surface area, area of the circle, diameter, radius, height. Area of the semicircle, diameter, radius, height. 
by removing the circular basis from the cylinder, you can have students compute the lateral surface area. You can also create cylinders and half cylinders using quarter cylinder pieces. Now instead of the polydrome squares, you can also use the polydrome framework squares. The cylinders become hollow, but you can easily see the height and the radius. Plus, when it comes time to pick them up, it's very easy to do. For these, not so much. Here's a nice visual aid to help students who are learning three dimensions. I just drew in the X, the Y, and the Z axis, and then a student can just place this on his or her desk as a reminder of which axis is which. With the cone, you can find its volume total surface area, area of the circle, diameter, radius, slant height. With the half cone, volume, total surface area, area of the semicircle, diameter, radius, slant height, and the height. Now to find the height of the cone, that's a bit more difficult. My recommendation is just use a pipe cleaner and then just measure the length. By removing the base of the cone, you can ask students to compute the lateral surface area. You can create a cone or half cone using quarter cones. Or how about three quarters of a cone? I can replace these right triangles with frameworks right triangles. Here's an example of a half cone using the frameworks triangles. Here you can clearly see the diameter, radius, height, and slant height. And these are also very easily put away. These are tougher ugh, to grab at the same time. Here are a few more complicated solids. The first one is a bicone or dicone. It's just two cones connected at their bases. This solid is a cone connected to a cylinder. And here we have a silo. It's just a hemisphere attached to a cylinder. If you want something more complicated, just remove this circle and attach a cone at the end. The last solid I want to present in this video is called a spherocon. To create it, you go through the process of creating a dicone, but you only create one half like this, and then for the other half, you put the dicone at a 90 degree angle and then attach the two pieces. The interesting thing about this solid is that when you roll it, the following occurs. It wobbles back and forth in a straight line. 